Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In our last video we started with our ArrayList class, and so I want to continue with the methods that we wrote in our header file. So over here in our header file, we took care of our default constructor, and we also took care of these add methods. So we need to take care of some more of these methods. Um, we wrote the default add method, which just adds an item to the end of the list, and the add with a particular index, which bumps everything else down the list. And we also took care of resize and need to resize, two of our helper methods. So what we're going to do now is take care of our other resource methods, the ones that actually deal with uh, manipulating the data. We took care of add which adds at a particular index or just adds to the end of the list. So now we need a corresponding remove. So we're going to have, um, so our template, remember that because we are dealing with a class that we don't know at the time we're writing the code, it's going to be determined by whatever main method is running it. We have this template class T, which allows us to manipulate things. So we have void, array list, template T, and we're running the remove method for some index. And so what we need to do is go through from that point on, I want to remove stuff. So if my list currently looks like a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I want to remove what's in this position here, then what I want to do is I want to take this element and copy it over. I want to take this element and copy it over. So what happens is that this spot is gone, and then I'm copying the 3 over, and then I'm copying the 4 over, and then I need to make sure that I adjust the length of my list, this list size variable that we talked about up here, to make sure that that data gets removed correctly. So we're going to say 4 int i gets index, because we're going to start manipulating at the index we're, pre we're past. i is less than list size i++, plus plus, and we're going to say that data sub i is going to get data sub i plus 1. And so that means that index is going to get index plus 1, index plus 1 will get index plus 2, and the last element, which would be list size minus 1, will get data sub list size. So that gets the data copied correctly, and then we need to make sure that we take list size and appropriately decrement it because our list is now one shorter. So this is our remove element. So these are our modifiers. These actually mutate the array list by either adding data to it or removing data from it. Um, the other things that we need to do are the get and set methods that we have. So we're going to have, again, template class t and void array list sub t colon colon and this is going to be get at a particular index so if I'm going to get I don't want this to be a void I actually want this to return an item of type t and it's going to be very simple to write this because all we're going to do is to say if uh, index is less than or equal to list size, then we want to return data sub index. And of course, I am going to have this situation down here. It's not truly an else, but it's acting just like an else. But if I reach this point, then what I want to do is I want to return null. Remember that null is how we deal with objects when there's not actually a pointer, an, actually an object there. We're returning a null pointer. We're returning a memory address that's equal to zero. I could say return zero, but I actually want to return null. That way I know that I'm returning a reference to an object that doesn't exist. So I need to put this check in there and say, hey, if this spot doesn't exist, then I can't do anything. And so we need to take care of the set as well, the corresponding set method. So template class T, and we're going to be a void this time, array list sub T colon colon set. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have two parameters. We're going to have an index and an item that's going to be passed to us. And then what we need to do is we need to make sure that this index is within the bounds. So if uh, index is less than or equal to list size, then we're going to say that data sub 
index is going to get item. And then we just get back here. Now, I probably also need to put the restriction that uh, index has to be greater than or equal to zero. And I need to do the same thing down here as well, just to make sure that this is a valid array, because if they pass us a negative one, I do want to kind of not do something destructive. So if index is greater than or equal to zero and index is less than list size, then we're going to alter our list in this way. So we now have a get and set, and we're taking care of these things. Everything's working the way that it should. So now what I want to do is I want to take care of our index of and last index of. That's actually going to search through and find a particular element if it exists in our list or return negative one if it doesn't. So template class T, and we're going to have void array list type T, and this is going to be index of for an item T. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through our array and we're going to see if that item is in there. So for int i gets zero, i is less than or equal to uh, list size i plus plus. And then I'll say if uh, the item is equal to, now of course I'm checking the equals equals here. So this has to be a type where equals equals has been overrode. So this is kind of like in our fraction class where we wrote an equals equals method that returned a boolean, comparing the fraction's value to another fraction. But if this item is equal to equal to data sub uh, i, then I want to return i. And if that happens, then that's great. If I reach this part of my list, then we didn't find it. So we need to make sure we return negative one. So I'm going through from the beginning of my list to the end of my list, and I'm checking each element of data. And if I find it, then I'm returning the position that we found it. Otherwise, we're returning a negative one. So this should be a type int that we're returning. And we're gonna do the same thing for our last index of. So array list sub t last index of for a t item. And it's going to run the same way. The only difference is I want to start with the last element of the list. So list size, i is greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus. And then if item is equal to data sub i, then we want to ah. Uh, we want to return i. Else, if we didn't find it, then we want to return negative 1. And so that's going to take care of index of and last index of. So the last method that we have is the size method that's going to tell us, you know, well, actually, no, we also need to do contains. Let's take care of that real quick. Contains is going to be fairly easy. So template class t, and we're going to return a bool array list sub t, and this is going to be contains t item. And all I want to do is I want to return the result if index of item is greater than negative 1. In other words, if I get any good value out of index of, then my item has to be in the list. So this will be true if the item is in the list because it'll have an index value that's greater than negative one. It'll be false if it's not in the list because I'll get a negative one out of it. So the last accessor that I need is going to be our size accessor. So template class T, and we're gonna return an int for array list sub T, and this is gonna be size. And all this is going to do is return the size of our array, which is list size. 
So very straightforward what we're doing here. We're manipulating the array and we're traversing the array, making sure that we can find the data within the array. What's important to us is that this class T has to be a fairly robust class. In other words, we should be able to check for the equality of items within that class, kind of like what we did when we overwrote the equals equals operator in our fraction class. Um, other than that, uh, should be pretty straightforward. Okay, real quick recap. I compiled this and we have some errors that we need to take care of. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take care of those errors. Uh, first thing that I need to do is I need to go to ArrayList.h. This bool need to resize in the prototypes. I forgot a semicolon in the previous video and so we're going to take care of that now. And then in our ArrayList.cpp, uh, one of the things that I need to do is that this need to resize is actually going to be a bool type, not a void type. So silly mistake that I made. The third mistake, and it's one that's a little bit more of a query one, is in our ArrayList get where we have this return null. In some versions of C++ compilers, null is a constant and it's zero. In this particular version on the Cloud9 server, it's not zero. So I can either put a zero here, but that doesn't really convey the concept that I'm really returning an object and I want to return a null pointer to the object. So I'm going to keep this as null but I'm actually going to scroll all the way up to the top here and I'm going to put in another define statement. So we can use define to define just that a particular phrase exists like we do with ArrayList.h but we can also define our constant so I can say that null is zero so everywhere it sees the word null it's going to replace it with a zero. So I'm going to save both of these and recompile and notice that we have no big issues here. So I did want to fix that before we go on to our next video. Next time we'll be constructing a main for this and testing out all of these methods. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.